Hey, what's up? Hello, my name is Emma, and today I'm going into the city for the History's All You Left Me launch party event with Adam Silvera. I am really, really excited for this event, specifically because I am helping host it with my best friend in the entire world, Michael Book Lion. Normally when I go to events, when I vlog events, it's from the audience seat, but like I'm gonna be sitting at the table with Adam and Michael, and we're gonna be asking questions and giving you guys the opportunity to ask questions, and I'm like over the moon excited. History's All You Left Me comes out tomorrow on January 17th. We're having the event on the 16th and everyone gets their looks early, which is like always exciting. Also, Kat from Katie Tastics in the city and she's coming to the event, which is gonna be super, super cool. So there are just so many exciting things happening today. Like I get to see my friends, I get to hang out with Adam, I get to see all of you guys and ask questions at the event. And it's just, it's gonna be great. And I know it, and I'm really, really pumped. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you taking a picture or a video? What is this? I'm vlogging. Oh, you're vlogging? 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 We're currently doing very important author things like running errands to get water and for some reason we need to get alcohol for a book signing with a bunch of teenagers but what Adam said. Just That's boost. what we're here for. Just we, got, we got water. We got plenty of water, so we're good there. Just the goose. Just kidding, there's a giant hole in the wall. No. That's where we're taking pictures. We have been hiding by the bathroom taking photos by this gorgeous blue wall. Uh, but gorgeous. Okay, it's a really pretty color. We're, sta we're hiding away from the We're crowd standing first. by the bathroom. Like normal people. <laughs> like normal people do. Can I stop being so ugly? Where's the high sexy filter? <laughs> Like about an hour until the event starts. Really, that long? Yeah. Oh my god, what like, are you gonna do? <laughs> I will never be satisfied. That's a different I remember song. that night. I remember 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 Tell me like, oh my god, I'm crying on page one. Because I remember writing this, like driving this a few years ago, thinking, wow, if I can make someone care about Griffin's loss um, so early on, like I've done my job, you know? And, and I've had enough people feed at me that I feel very like validated. Um, <laughs> which is validation is really important for like an evil mind of a person such as my mom. So, um, so yeah. Speaking of music, you named yourself the Taylor Swift Community. Yeah. <laughs> The Taylor Swift of YA, I believe, is what I said. Um, in the sense that you write about past relationships that you've been in. So, what is the question? Sorry. <laughs> so, what is the process of that like, and what is it like to build a world around something that's so close to you? Um, what was the process though? Like, I mean, I guess, like, okay, so especially the second book, um, it was inspired by a breakup. Uh, it's with this, I'm gonna just be public about this because we're public about this. It's with another author, Scandal. Um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, John Corey Whaley, who wrote Where Things Come Back and Noggin and High Logical Behavior, which are all incredible books, and I hope that they're here, you can check them out. But um, yeah, so we broke up, and it was just like this thing where, you know, we stayed really connected. Um, for, you know, like we broke up maybe in January or something. Oh, wow, we're like on an anniversary of like. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, it's fine, like we both are like dating like separate people and it's awesome and we don't have to live after. But, um, <laughs> but we, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where it's like we broke up because it was like long distance, wasn't really like working anymore. So it was like out of like total maturity um, and just like trying to be friends. And then, but we still were deeply in love with each other, you know, for like a good 10 months or something. And then, um, he started dating someone else. I became really bitter. Um, <laughs> uh, a year later, I decided to write a book about it. And I, um, I wrote a couple chapters and I was like, uh, hey, so just so you know, uh, my agent's sending this to my editor soon, this book that I've written that was definitely inspired by like a breakup and in which I kill you off. <laughs> um, and he was just, 
just like, oh man, I'm so jealous. I, I should have come up with that idea. I'm like, what you did. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and then, and that's how I made money. <laughs> I mean, like, I knew it was sad, but, like, um, I, and I feel so desensitized because, like, I, I often find when I read a story or whatever, it's, like, something that's super heartbreaking will happen, and people tell me that super heartbreaking things happen or whatever, and then I, I reach that point, I'm like, that's it? Like, and that, that's why I think I put my characters through such hell, like, if, if, if they're going to kind of, like, if I want, like, the reader to feel something, I feel like I have to really put them through the, um, through the work here, and, uh, um, yeah, I, I definitely cried drafting They Both Die at the end for the first time. So, and that book was nothing what it's like today, so I mean, if that's what the first draft is to me, good luck, guys, in September. Uh, but, but yeah, so I, I don't know, I get emotional, of course, but I, you know, someone asked me recently if, um, if I have to, like, get into, like, this, the headspace to do this or something, to, like, write, like, sad stuff or whatever. Um, and, like, I'm a super depressing note for everyone here. Like, I feel like I'm always carrying this stuff around anyway. Um, that it's, like, I'm not, like, a, obviously, like, I'm having a lot of fun right now. Like, I'm not, like, a state of state. But, I mean, I do feel like a lot of these things are constantly on my mind, like, you know, weighing down and stuff, and I'm always processing them. So, when it comes time to, like, put them on the page, like, it's... It's, it's therapy for me more than anything, but I mean, but when, even when you're engaged in therapy, you're still talking about it online or whatever, and when you're leading, walking into a therapy appointment, it's online, and when it's just a random Tuesday, it's online. Um, so I don't ever like get into like the active headspace for it, but um, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> your life sucks. <laughs> so, if Adam has three books of results, could go back and tell Adam right now. I don't know, probably make some of the like the names a little more like less obvious from the people they were inspired by. <laughs> uh, like I mean you literally have characters in the book, like in More Happy, it's a character named Baby Freddy who's based off a kid named Baby Eddie. And it, like, like, it really doesn't take much of a code to crack that one. Um, but um, so yeah, that's something I mean, and, like in you know, efforts to like avoid like awkwardness with people or whatever. Like, I mean I've had like kind of DM conversations with some of these people on Facebook or whatever, like, can't wait to read your book, and I'm just like not encouraging it because <laughs> they're in it. So, um, and, and very rarely painted in like a positive light. Um, I, I mean, I wrote it thinking I would have zero interaction with these people. So, but you write a book and people care about you again. So there you go. What's the heaviest thing you've had to write so far in your novels? Uh, um, the heaviest thing I've had to write in any of my novels. Um, I'm going to exclude They Both Die Um, it's just, it's just also not fair to you. You don't have that book yet. Um, uh, let me... For history, I guess it would. It, it's hard because, like, I, I would spoil some like really um, huge things for you. But um, I guess the funeral scene was really difficult, um, where Griffin and Jackson meet for the first time, and just like um, because like I wrote eulogies for so many of the characters. Like, some of them didn't even like make the cut for the final book, but um, there was like eulogies from like each parent and such, um, which was really important to me because like. I wanted to make sure that the parents were fully represented across. I thought I thought you just said what was the process like for forgetting? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, shade, okay. Um, okay, well, I mean, this is, you're probably gonna hate me. So this is how I met my agent. Um, I was having lunch with friends, and then some guy sat down next to me, and we were talking, and then eventually he was like, oh, you're working on a book? What's it about? And I was like, oh, it's about this boy who wants to go through this strategy of forgetting to get. He was like, oh, that sounds great. You should send it to me. Then he goes to go pee, and I'm like, he's not <laughs> Oh, he's broke, he's an agent, he's gonna be my intern, da 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 da. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, like, Brooks, um, he, uh, he, uh, yeah, we, we walked for a bit, he, like, walked me to the train station, gave me his car, and was like, yeah, you know, when you write that book, like, you should send it to me. And then a year later, I wrote that book, and I sent it to him, and here I am again on this tool. <laughs> uh, so, really, it's not, I mean, I sent the query letter, but, like, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have to go through nearly as grueling a process. Basically, just, like, hang out in New York cafes and, like, <laughs> Um, <laughs> and who has the last question? Um, do you outline your questions before 
Um, it, it, it changes with each book, which I guess is like a really uh, good time to kind of like encourage any writers in the room that like, um, however you write one book may differ from the way you write the next book. So with More Happy, what I did was I, I, you know, I've been trying to write that book for a while, and then all of a sudden, like, I don't, I, I don't know what happened, but like something finally made sense, and I like literally sat down and I wrote the first chapter. Um, but while I was writing the first chapter, I was already getting ideas for like chapters two and three, so I had a notebook that was dedicated to just more happy than not planning. Um, and I, so while writing chapter one, I was outlining two and three, and then while writing chapter two, I was outlining three and four, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the end of the book. Um, so they both died. Being my book that comes out in September, um, I outlined the entire thing from start to finish before I wrote a single page. Um, and then for History of Zoe Luck Me, I, you know, I, I wrote, I did outline it because again, I told it to my editor on a proposal. Um, so he had to know what was happening. I had to know what was happening, which is really great. Um, it gave me some direction. And, uh, but it always changes, even when you do the outlines, which is great because you're allowing the characters to kind of like have the freedom to tell their own story as well. But um, it, it, it is good for when you're, um, really intimidated by what's supposed to come next and you're just kind of standing like staring at a blank page and uh like you've prepared yourself um but it's not the case for all writers and some writers can't outline at all so i have to outline the entire thing from start to finish um but you'll find out what works for you and then if it differs from the next book that's okay too um but yeah so thank you all so much for um, <laughs> This is my beautiful mac and cheese. And then this is Michael's pizza that he gets every single time he comes here. And then this is Kat's super awesome Look at quinoa the salad. In the a, only a vegan item bowl. on the menu. <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> I must clearly be a masochist because every single time I go to a book signing, I know I'm gonna get sick afterwards, and I'm sick. I mean, I was sick yesterday. I don't know if I mentioned that in the vlog, but like, it, it obviously got worse and you can hear it. <laughs> but regardless, this event was so much fun and it was very different from anything I had done before, and I'm so glad it was just successful and there was so many people there for Adam, and it was just a really, really great event. So this is actually the first book signing ever. I think that I have never brought books to because I already have all of Adam's books and they are all signed and personalized to me. But because I recently did get history in the mail because Soho Teen sent out this really awesome package uh, inspired by History is All You Left Me for a couple of different booktubers. So we got the book, we got like a little sunshine stress ball, some zombie pirate stickers which are relevant to the book. They also send us a California bookmark and some sunglasses. I believe, I think that was it. There might have been one or two more things in there, but they obviously also sent us, history is all you left me. And so they did something really cool inside because uh, the people in the book, the characters like puzzles. So they made personalized crossword puzzles for everyone. So I figured I would share with you what they were if you couldn't see it in the Instagram post I posted with all of the stuff from the box. But across number one is your favorite Band, your number one favorite band, which is obviously the Midnight Beast. Uh, the part where you chased Jamie Campbell Bauer into his cab. Yes, that happened. Yes, I am proud of it. Uh, and it's Union Square Park back in 2014. And then the final one is the rune you have tattooed in your arm, which is obviously an Arazi. And like it just comes together in this very nice little crossword puzzle. So I think that is just a really cute personalized option that I'll probably never get again from another book and it was just it was really nice. And then he also signed my book as you can see. Adam always writes really ridiculous stuff in my signed books and I love it. It says and 
Emma with a million M's. <laughs> Thanks for all the love and always viva la Alec. May he and Magnus have a gay and magical baby. Much love, Adam Silvera, because of course we talk about Shadow Hunters. So I loved history and I loved this signed book and I loved the box. It was kindly sent to me by Soho Teen. But you guys saw the event. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of laughs and a lot of good questions and I got to hang out with so many friends that I love. I got to meet so many new people. I feel like this vlog really captured the day because it was just a ton of running around in the beginning in the freezing cold New York. And then we had the event where we asked the questions that you saw and then we just sat around and talked and we got dinner and I went home and went to sleep and went to class today. And I'm gonna go to bed because I don't feel good. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and don't forget to head out this week and go purchase your own copy or get a copy of Histories All You Left Me at your local library because it is fantabulous. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!